What's up everyone? Welcome back to Highline Prestige. I finally got a little chance here at work to review this very special cigar. It's special in the fact that I got it and I found it, uh, but that's about it. Flavor-wise, I'm not really sure. I'm hearing mixed reviews on this thing. I got this cigar in Orlando at a very reputable uh, cigar shop called Corona Cigars. They had it there. Uh, I think this cigar was about $50, I want to say. And a full box of these, box of 25, goes for around $1,400. Now, I saw this brand pop up maybe a month ago, a month or two. I know this cigar was released at the end of 2022. Uh, and the first initial thought of the brand, I was like, all right, this is going to be like another El Septimo. Fancy band. A little bit of a design to everything, but you know that, that's going to be just about it. That was until I did a little research, found out some more information about uh, Mirafell. So Mirafell, uh, specifically this cigar, came out at the end of 2022, pays homage to the Mirafell Cigar Factory that was established in 1876 in Germany. So they actually got some history, which is a good thing. You know, they got history. They are known for making Cameroon tobacco. Uh, now, the only thing that I'm kind of like, ah, like, really? Like the Atabase. Atabase, if you ever had an Atabase, is an incredible cigar. They say undisclosed tobacco, you know? And then you, when you smoke that cigar, you understand. But, I mean, here's a cigar brand that has a lot of history working with tobacco. And... You know, they say this is undisclosed. Now, I read, uh, I read, I watched one review of this other guy. I think he did a podcast uh, with the owner of this company or something. And then they discussed about what the wrapper was, the filler and the binder. But then if you go on Corona and you look up this cigar, you know, it says undisclosed everything. So kind of like, what are you? Are you undisclosed? Are you not undisclosed? You know, and I'm going to imagine that this is most likely a Cameroon wrapper. If I do find any information on the filler or the binder or whatever, I'm going to put a little screenshot right here. And uh, let's get into this. So I also, you know, I'm going to do a little straight cut. But I also bought one of these in the Churchill format for my buddy. He tried it first and his... It essentially, it blew up on him. I mean, he's a guy that smokes Davidoff's, Padrones, Opus X, like the good stuff. He gets perfect burns. He cuts it right way, the whole thing. And then he was having trouble because it would, like, burn nicely up to here. And then it would start going crooked. And then, you know, the leaf would start coming off and the whole thing. He ended up putting it down because he was like, there's no flavor. It sucks, you know. But... We're going to give this thing a go. Right off the bat, we've got a perfect draw. It doesn't feel restricted or anything, especially for the small uh, straight cut that I did on this cigar. I definitely taste like there's almost like a little pepper that's like hitting my lips you know you get that little pepper note to it and there's some type of like fruity part to it maybe almost like figs um, you know I'm when it comes to like flavors and what do a cigar taste like and everything I'm like I don't really get too much into it I've seen some reviews some people are like tastes like apple pie it tastes like a steak it tastes like you know all these weird things and I'm like nah I can't get that deep but I could taste a little of those like basic notes and then you know probably a little bit more than what a beginner can taste been smoking cigars for over 10 years now but yeah there's that like little fig sweetness in it but then definitely a little bit of that pepper notes I'm praying this one doesn't like blow up like how my friends did, but we gotta give it a go. 
I'm going to try to record the video maybe when it gets a little bit over here. Again, I'm also at work, but I, I'm like two days late making this video for you guys. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to record it some more. All right, boys, so we're getting pretty far on this thing. I just, I feel slightly sad, man. I mean, this cigar, it's like, it's doing a nice little burn, but I got that feeling any moment the ash is going to drop. Flavor-wise, didn't really change too much. It's still, you know, there's a little bit of cedar component into it. The pepper kind of mellowed down a little bit. Got a little bit of spice in there. You still get that, like, big sweetness sort of I mean I just the cigars I look at right you got Padron 50th that is a fabulous fabulous cigar you know for the price and that's like a $40 cigar then you got the Davidoff Royal which is like a hundred dollar cigar fabulous freaking awesome cigar right then you got this guy that kind of sits like kind of slightly in between and it's just like I don't know for $60, I'm not, I'm not sold on it. And, uh, you know, everybody has a different palate and everything like that. Uh, but I usually, when I smoke these expensive cigars, I try to compare them to Davidoff, to Padrones, to other cigars that are relatively in the area of the same price range. You can't really compare like a Camacho Connecticut to something like this. But I think what it is, is I think it's a cigar company that has a lot of history to it for the past. You know, they were making tobacco in 1876 or since 1876. And now they're like, okay, let's hop into the cigar world and create this, you know, special edition cigar, make the details look all cool, all that stuff, presentation, beautiful, the whole thing. But then all these cigar companies, they just, they don't have the experience uh, to make the fillers, to blend the right cigars together. You know, it's the same thing with El Septimo. You know, labeling, the branding, it's pretty cool. But the actual flavors is just, is not there because it's, they don't have the experience or their fields aren't old enough or, you know, whatever it could be. So it's kind of sad. But I'm going to pass the camera over to my buddy Gary, uh, the guy I was telling you about earlier. And uh, he smoked one of these. He's going to be very honest from his side. You know, I know I still got the rest of the cigar to see what I think ultimately. But is it worth it? I don't really think so right now. We'll see towards the end. Maybe it changes. So let's see what Gary says. Did he like it? Did he not like it? I don't know. First off, the first thing you need to do is knock that damn cigar off that nice stand. The cigar is not worthy of the stand. It's not worthy of the stand? All right, Gary, what do you think of this cigar? Because I, I know you smoked it in a Churchill format, and you're smoking, what are you smoking? A Padron 1964 Anniversary Series. This man knows flavors. He knows taste. He'd be smoking Padrones, Davidoffs, the whole thing. What do you say? What do you say, Gary? Bullshit. Bullshit? Bullshit. Don't, Why is it bullshit? Don't buy it. Don't smoke it. It blows up. It cracks. Construction issues. Flavor profile is not there. The ash. The ash finally dropped. So what I'm going to do is this is what the cigar looks like at the moment. It's slightly doing a little tunnel. And uh, it's cracking a little bit. I'm not going to fix it because if a Padron or a Davidoff did that, usually... They'll fix themselves. So to give it the full effect, you know, is it going to fix itself? Is it going to tunnel? What's it going to do? You know, we're going to, we're just going to see what happens. Now, if it gets very bad, I'll update you guys and then I'll fix it. So it actually fixed itself pretty well. Got to take the label off here in a moment. Uh, you know, but it is a little bit flat. I do understand what Gary's saying. It's a little flat. The flavor hasn't really changed too much. Definitely not $60 worth flavor. Uh, you know, it's even $5 more than the Placencia Year of the Rabbit. And 
I think I'd rather take the Placencia uh, over this. It's kind of building up this like a little bit of bitter flavor towards the back. And uh, it's kind of like, honestly, I would put it down right now. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I get that. It might not be mine. But for you guys, I'm going to push on through, take the label off, see how it goes all the way down. This is not, this is not what I wanted to see. As soon as I took the label off, there's a little tobacco there. And there's, if I could get it. There's our first crack. You guys can see right there on the right. Hopefully the 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 wrapper is not gonna fall apart on me. It always sucks to see that. I mean, I know it doesn't look like that big of a deal, but that could change everything on a cigar. The crack could get bigger, blow up the cigar. There's only one way of finding out. So look, people, I'm trying to give it all I got, but it already cracked. Now I've kept this cigar in my shop humidor and uh, all the cigars in there have been doing just fine. They're well humidified. I have a system in there that works beautifully. All the cigars are good to go. The cigar has been sitting there for a while so it's not dry. Uh, even the initial cut and draw, it's not too bad. You usually end up doing a little slight bite on the cigar, but construction that's just what you're buying, I guess. The ash is falling off again. I know in theory I could fix it, hit it with a light, but I mean, look at that. It's already coming off, crumbling, and doing the whole thing. And honestly, my regulars too, they made a valid point. I'm a cigar aficionado. I mean, I don't really think of myself as one, but I guess I am. And, uh, I should be able to tell you guys if the cigar's worth it or not. In my opinion, it's not. And the flavor's just, ah, it's just lacking. I just, I can't smoke the rest of it. I can't. It's got to go bye-bye. And uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, who knows? Maybe if it's something worth it, you know, if you want to try something, try it out. See what you think, you know. But as far as me, what I like, it's just not, it didn't do it. It didn't do it. And I got like a lot of rare cigars. I like all that jazz. All I, you know, I like non-rare cigars. The whole thing, you know. And uh, I have appreciation for just about every cigar out there. As long as it's not flavored. You know. Anyway, we're not even going to get into that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the review. And uh, more good things to come. I mean, we're growing. I cannot believe it. It's already happening. You know. So we'll see. Try to get another puff in it. This thing's going out. I'm going to toss it out. I'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs> I'm going to throw it. And stepping on it. Step on it. I can't squash it. I can't squash it. We've smoked a lot of. Here we go. All right. Are we on? Are you in that? We're on. We're on. Why you, not? you're the one that got the Instagram profile. You trying to make a get an Audi R8 from social media? No, I'm not good. All right, we've seen what those prices of the damn cars have gone for. They've gone up a lot more than <laughs> what you were looking at them at. Double, <laughs> double, bring a yeah. trailer. Yeah, That's you should have bought it when you had it. You know what? Chance. Hindsight is everything. Yeah. You know, damn cars, damn, damn cars. All right, so, so. We've smoked a lot of. All right, so we smoked a lot of. Are we? We're on, man. We're on. We're rolling. We. We've smoked. <laughs> you, you look. My, you look at me and say one, no. All right, take, take one thousand two. Yeah, you gotta catch my my natural arrogant <laughs> element. I can't duplicate my belligerence. <laughs> it only comes once. <laughs> Well, we gotta rig this place with cameras and, and the audio thing. 
me being an asshole only comes once. <laughs> it's the first delivery pitch. <laughs> all right, all right. We've smoked. We've smoked. Uh, Take we 2001. Take... We've smoked. We've... We've... 